God tells Abraham to pick up his bags and leave his homeland, his birthplace, his father's house, to a new land, a land that I will show you, and I will bless you. And God enumerates a host of blessings that will happen because of his departure to this new land. No sooner does he arrive in the promised land, the land that was promised to bring only blessing to Abraham and Sarah, of course, there's a famine in the land, and it compels him to go down to Egypt. Now, there's a dispute between Rashi and Ramban, Nachmanides, as to whether Abraham did the right thing. But Rashi maintains that there was nothing wrong with Abraham going to Egypt. There's no food. You can't live. You can't survive. So he goes to Egypt, and he tells his wife, Sarah, look, you're very beautiful. They're going to try to take you away. Tell everyone that we're brother and sister rather than husband and wife, because we're husband and wife. They'll kill me so they can take you as a wife for the pharaoh. Instead, if we're just brother and sister, I will not be in danger. And then he says, as Rashi explains it, that not only will they not kill me, they'll allow me to survive, they will benefit me, they will give me gifts. And here the obvious question is, granted that Abraham was not afraid that Sarah would be harmed. He knew that she was a holy woman. He didn't trust himself, his own holiness, that he wouldn't be harmed because of his greatness. But he knew that Sarah would not be touched if she would be taken by Pharaoh, which indeed she was, and indeed Pharaoh did not touch her. Instead, she, Pharaoh was smitten, to use a old biblical term, by God, and he didn't touch her. So she was safe. But the question is, she is going to be going through such a horrible ordeal, be taken by this horrible, immoral pharaoh, and Abraham is thinking about making money? This looks very bad for Abraham. And Abraham was the paragon of virtue. What exactly is going on? And the following is based on an insight of the Rebbe that God promised Abraham that he's going to bless him. And according to Rashi, one of the blessings was that he is going to become rich. Why would Abraham care about wealth? Abraham had only one interest. His interest was to promote monotheism, to promote righteousness, justice, truth, peace, all the va values of Judaism. That was Abraham's whole life. But in order to influence other people, in order to accomplish this goal, you have to have the resources to be able to travel, to be able to invite people to your home. Abraham excelled in hospitality. He used to have constant wayfarers coming to his home that he fed gourmet meals to. We read a little bit later how the three angels disguised as people come to his house and he feeds them a gourmet meal. You need money for that. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe was once crying. This was in the mid-40s. And they asked him, why is he crying? He says there's so many things he wants to do to save Jews, to help bring Judaism to a generation of ignorant Jews, to help people materially. There's so many projects he wants to do, and he has no resources with which to do it. And that bothered him. That he, that's what he cried about. He didn't need money for himself. He lived a very frugal life, a very, very limited uh, physical life. Hardly ate or anything or hardly did anything that required any expenses for himself. But he cried because he couldn't help others. That's what Abraham wanted and understood that that's why God blessed him with money. Now, all of a sudden, they're now in a foreign land, and Sarah is being abducted. True, he knew that she would be safe and secure, but he wanted to find some, some rationale for this. Why is God doing this? Obviously, he would accept whatever God does without an explanation, but he says, ah, now I can see what the plan that God has this is going to bring us the fulfillment of God's promise. Not that he cared for the money per se, but he cared for God's promise. And that would help him and her cope with what was going on. In other words, when things go bad, when people suffer, when we see things going the wrong way, we don't have to have an explanation for everything. 
we know that there are things that happen that we can't understand, we can't explain. But wherever we can see the light in the darkness, we are obligated to look for that light and to help reveal that light. And that's exactly what Abraham is doing. And in these last days of exile, there are a lot of negative things going on in the world which we cannot necessarily explain. But wherever we can explain it, wherever we could see the light, we should emphasize the light and and bask in that light because that light will eventually grow to become the light of the messianic age.